now we are on set number four. Is that correct? Set number four, and we're also going to be working on arms, but also with shoulders again. Is that right? And of course, anytime you involve your shoulders, you're going to work a little bit into your neck and back. Yeah, so, so we, have, we have our scarves then. Yes, and we're going to first, um, obviously, set up posture. And then we're going to encourage them to hold the scarf or the towel or the strap out in front of them with their arms straight. So your elbows are pretty locked. Okay. And then just so that they understand what that feels like. And then let's relax for a moment and have it drape it into the lap. And then again, bring out our, this time let's encourage them to check to see that their arms are extending straight out from their shoulders. So they're not, so like, it's kind of like you're in a Y, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. And we'll inhale that scarf up. And now just really opening up the chest and then exhale down to shoulder height. Inhale up. And this time, really pull the shoulders back. Maybe just pull your this scarf back a little bit behind your head. Exhale down. And one more time. Inhale up. And then exhale down. Release and just feel. Ah. I love that one. I know. I don't know what about you, but we carry so much tension in that part of the upper neck. So the one thing about when you're observing on the screen in this will be to try to again to just encourage them to hold their arms straight and level as okay. much as possible so you don't have somebody pulling to one side. Um, so the next scarf exercise will be to do the same thing Sitting up straight and tall, scarf out in front of you, raising it up on an inhale as we did before. And this time we're going to bend into the elbow, really open up the chest and bring the scarf down to the top of our shoulders. Inhale back up, straighten the arms out. And then once again, lower it down. Ah. And it's helpful, obviously, you can do, I like to do maybe two or three rounds of these, your choice. Okay. And you really want to add, do the same. You can also do more than that, of course, um, just to make it a little more intense. So now we're going to add a little twist to this. So let's inhale, scarf overhead, and then without moving your head, I mean your hips, just stay grounded in your chair and bend over to the right and feel the opening on the left side stretching particularly of the muscles between them come back to center and then guess what we're going to go to the other side and just notice perhaps the difference between each side all of these practices just helping us to be more observant of what's going on in our own body. <sighs> Come back to center and then lower the scarf down and once again feel that beautiful releasing energy. We'll close this particular Zoom Buster with another breathing technique called and fire breathing does truly do that. It, it generates some fire and energy. It's very good for stimulating focus. So we will gently rest our palms, our hands on our thighs or cup them over our knees. Again, we've got that nice tall posture. The shoulders are still up, the chin is level. And on this, what we'll be doing is we'll be inhaling and then on the exhale, saying the sound shh. So let's inhale shh. 
And now this next time, we're going to inhale and say the word shh, and we'll do this 10 times in a row, getting a little faster towards the end. So inhale, shh, 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 shh. So you just can, and you can again play around with that. Students usually love that to just be able to create that fire, make it into a game where it's perfectly um, safe and actually very healthy to do it up to like 30 times and really get it going fast. Okay. Okay. So it's just fire breathing is a fun thing. Yes. And the one thing that I didn't really cue before that, so should have, is that you can also really, once they've got it, you can remind them to snap their belly in on yes. the exhale. Let's try that. If so it will become, yeah, definitely. I would teach it without that, so they get the shh sound, and then I would come back, shh, the belly snap, shh. And so when your belly snaps, it's snapping towards your spine, yes? Yes, you're pulling it in because what that does is it creates on that strong exhale with the air coming out, you contract your lower belly, the muscles below your belly button, and it helps push the exhale out. So you're pushing, it's a more complete exhale. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and go for the 10. Inhale. And if you want a nice firm core, go for it. <laughs> what I will, I do want to add here is um, that is a very good example of a breathing exercise where I would do this Zoom Buster right after lunch. Oh, this one after lunch. Okay. Because it's very intense and it could cause some d digestive issues or reflux. I mean, typically we don't do a lot of intense breathing or any kind of activity right after we eat a full meal, right? So you're saying so that I would not do it after, right after no. I know my students have eaten. But okay. Most of the time, they're going to eat, they're going to come back to class, have a lesson, right? And then yes. maybe an hour later or 45 minutes later, that should be fine. Okay. I just, but you know, you're going to always see anyone with intense breathing or um, any type of um, athletics normally don't do it right after you just eat. <laughs> I'm just laughing and thinking. Middle school kids, yeah, you probably don't want them breathing heavily. <laughs> well, if you're in a classroom, which obviously everybody would be in masks, but like expelling all of that lunch breath <laughs> would not be the best idea. So, no, those are, well, this is a very forceful, actually, I saw the cough studies on fire breathing um, in my yoga training. And, you know, yes, that's such a forceful exhale, vehicles travel across the room very fast. Yeah. yeah. So in the so, age of COVID, we don't want to do fire breathing around right. the video. <laughs> We're doing it at home, right? Right. Um, 